It has been a pretty good season for mail. I got this very long box. I guess you could call it an oblong box in the mail today. And while I'm pretty sure I know what's in it, it's still, there's a hint of mystery. I can tell through the, the cardboard of the box that it must be a very thick book. I can feel it in there. But, you know, there's a chance I could be surprised by, you know, an early Kickstarter delivery or something, but I'll let you in on a secret. I'm pretty sure this is Red Markets. Let's find out. Okay. So, we have a box that is in pretty good shape, all things considered. Some battering around the corners, but we can hear a lot of packing material in there. It was shipped from Great Britain. Now, if this is Red Markets, the project coordinator set up distribution hubs so that distribution could be as quick and cheap as possible, which is definitely appreciated by me living here in Korea. And uh, <laughs> I should have brought the exact amount, I guess. But let's just say I'm bowing to sensitive sensibilities of those who are shocked by such things. All right. Brown paper. Excellent. Lots of it. Also excellent. And inside, I'm glad I opened it this way. Inside we see an additional support mechanism for the book, which is corrugated cardboard and significantly longer than the book itself. I can see the book in there, up past almost to my second knuckle. So that's all right. So take it out of this cardboard sleeve. There's nothing in there. Check the back, similar, not quite as much space, but still a lot of clearance to prevent any bumping whatsoever. This is almost a new highlight in packaging, I would have to say. All right. Now I've seen the color scheme of the book, so now I'm, you know, certain that it's Red Markets. And of course it's upside down, there we go. Red Markets, I've been getting a lot of big books lately, wouldn't you say? Now let's make sure it's in there, okay. So we're all lined up, you can see it. All right, Red Markets. There's the cover. The game of economic horror. All right. Let's take a look for real, for real, shall we? Let's go on a trip, you and I, to look at the cover. Now, as you can tell, it has a, a glossy cover. You can see the overhead fluorescence reflected in it. But what a tense scene we have portrayed on this cover. It says a game of economic horror. What could that even mean? Well, zombies. <laughs> there's, there's more to it than that, but uh, it's a funny way to say it. All right, let's take a look inside. Let's do our listen test. Now, when we were talking about this Vihander earlier in the week, we talked about this kind of binding, all right? So it's very quiet, very well put together. What is our page count? I've been looking at the PDF for a while, but I have completely forgotten what its final page count was. Four hundred and ninety some. Okay. So around five hundred pages. So two hundred less than the Mass of Nerlathotep Companion and about 100 more than, or sorry, 100 less than Zweihander. Let's take a look at the back. This is our setting. Okay. The zombie apocalypse. In a, what? In a world that recognizes the idea of zombie apocalypses. <laughs> so it's not like anybody in this setting 
was unaware of the idea. And I find that to be an appealing feature of this particular game. I'm not really one to go for uh, zombie games or zombie apocalypse games, but this game does enough things differently that it really piqued my interest. Of course, the other thing that went along with that was how well conducted and constructed the actual Kickstarter was. Let's talk a little bit about the binding. This is a sewn binding. And I've opened up to page 178 and you can see the stitching as you should be able to and you see that it opens wonderfully flat. This is a very well done example of this kind of binding. Nice large margin, very easy to read. All right. You'll also notice the, the quietness of it. It didn't crack or creak when opened. Right. And we can turn from page to page and everything just lies flat. All right. We have a slightly larger than usual font size which also contributes to the ease of reading. It is a not a high gloss page but it is a glossy page and I'm not getting a lot of glare which is very nice and as you can see there is no transparency between the pages. There is a subtle watermark in the background as, as if of crumpled paper and that isn't interfering with you know quick reading either. It's full color interiors. There's a of course a heavy use of red highlights which I quite like. Very maintaining the theme We have a fairly consistent art style all the way through. Right. This is a very, very well put together book. I am extremely pleased with the quality of printing and the clarity of the design. Right. So by Bending the pages like this, that's about as much glare as I can get off the pages. So it's a very nice kind of satiny finish to have on the pages. It should be very, very easy to read. Now this is a very solid and heavy book. It's delivered quite quickly for all of that, which is nice. And the fact that it would come in an oversized box in an oversized protective sleeve wins very, very high points for me. So this ends the unboxing part of the video. Next part, we'll talk a little bit about the system. On its surface, the system for red markets is quite simple. Now while the system itself may prove ultimately to be much more flexible than you would imagine just looking at it, all it's really requiring you to do for its, for its basic implementation is roll two d10s. So each player around the table will need to have two d10s and to maintain the thematic resonance within uh, this particular game, one of them will be black and one of them will be red. The actual colors, of course, are not important, just so that they can be distinguished between the two. But as you go through the book, as the book itself tells you, this is the profit system. So you're trying to be in the black and not in the red. How the system actually works is that the two dice are rolled in tandem and the results compared. If they are equal, or if the result on the red die is higher than the result on the black die, you fail. If the result on the black die is higher than the result on the red, then you succeed. So if you think about the probabilities of that for a minute, it should make you smile. It's a little less likely to succeed than to fail. So, Profit, the economy, red markets, the game master is called the market. All the way through the system, there is real effort made to provide lots of hooks for memory and to keep things as simple as possible. The book itself maintains a pretty conversational tone all the way through. Now sometimes the writer can go astray or the writers can go astray. There's like half a page 
wasted on telling you that they're not going to explain what a role-playing game is, for example. They would have used less space simply to explain a role-playing game or to provide a direct and useful link to their own website or a specific website if they felt like not using space for it. But to use space to tell you that they're not using space for it, this is, you know, this is one of those things that, say, that says, hey, whoever's editing the project really needs to say, yeah, this is really funny text, but cut it and put something useful in there. So the book is quite full. It walks you through a lot of really inspiring setting material. It has a very compelling theme. A lot of people out there still enjoy the idea of the zombie apocalypse and uh, zombie survival horror, but the game comes out and tells you that that is a skin over what's really going on here. The game is a poverty simulator. It's about post-apocalyptic scarcity, which can be applied metaphorically to any kind of scarcity. And when you realize that all of the roles in the game will in some way require you to spend resources that you have worked hard in the game to accrue, that all makes some real sense. One of the best things that leapt out at me about Red Markets is that when it comes to procedure, the game doesn't pull any punches and it goes all out to be clear. And the best example of that is when it, des to, when it describes when to roll, or more specifically, when not to roll. And in order to call for a roll, three conditions need to be met. One, that failure is possible. Two, that if there is failure, that the story needs to be able to continue or come to a, a reasonable conclusion, a realistic and satisfying conclusion. And the third, and I may have got remember these out of order, that there needs to be consequences for failure. So in other words, failure needs to be interesting. And it doesn't just come out and tell you these things. It explains and then provides multiple examples so you can see this in different context, so you can understand what is meant by failure. So when you come away from reading this very clear and very useful section, you know exactly when to roll and when not to roll in a game of red markets, and could conceivably carry that in or on further to other games that you play. This, I feel, is the best use of a game book for game players. That we recognize that these are technical and that their purpose is instruction. And so therefore, they should instruct. Anyway, all the way through this project, I have been impressed. I'm very impressed with the level of research that went into setting up the Kickstarter and that went into actually designing the game, the talent that was assembled to make sure the game could be produced, the attention paid to making sure that the vision for the final product matched the final product, exceeding all expectations with a fantastic print job. And then on top of that, delivering early. So every once in a while on this channel, we point out Kickstarters that are worth examining carefully as the example of things, of how to do things the right way. This one stands out. Okay, that's it for our initial coverage of Red Markets. Expect more in the future.